Good morning, everybody. Wake up. Wake up, wake up. In Provincetown. This week featuring. Wake up, wake up. Can I have some coffee? Wake up, wake up. Make it strong, please. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. It's Friday, March 10th. Yeah. This is Wake Up in Provincetown. It is. Yeah. We've got like a massive show for you today. There's yeah. a lot to cover, a lot of guests, a lot of important topics. Mm -hmm. what, who's coming on? Um, what, have, what are they saying? We have Dave from Ursamen coming on to talk about Out of Hibernation Weekend. It's, it's Out of Hibernation Weekend, which started last night in town. If you looked around in Provincetown and you saw more bears than usual, they've just come out of hibernation. I love that. Me too. Yeah. And? We also have Anne back for another weather segment. Our weather girl is back to talk about everything but the weather. <laughs> election season in Provincetown is beginning. I believe the uh, election for select board, there are two open seats this year. Mm -hmm. It's not till the first week of May, but we've got our first candidate on for an interview this morning, Eric Borg, who is running, his first time running mm -hmm. for select board. But Eric, of course, is a member of the health board. You know, he's been engaged in town politics I for- the health board. Visitor board Services of, Board. Aren't you on Board of and Health? Appeals. No, spo oh, zoning. zoning. And Visitor Services. And Visitor Services. Mm -hmm. We really are prepared. I did my homework. <laughs> my dog um, ate my homework. It's going to be a really fun election season, though. I th there's, like Bob said, there's two open seats, um, but rumor is there are five people running. I know there's a few people confirmed, but I think there are other people who aren't quite confirmed. And if you've been with us since the beginning of Wake Up, I think one of the most important things that we did in the first six months was that uh, candidates forum yeah. when we had three people running for one seat at the beginning of 2021. Um, that was like a hot moment in time. It really was. Yeah, it got a little, uh, got a little wild. It's the first time we went viral. Mm-hmm. There, were, yeah. So hopefully this is a friendlier campaign than what no, that. No, that's <laughs> no fun. <laughs> I was like, where are we? It, it got crazy. <laughs> we also have uh, one of my new favorite, you know how you meet somebody that's mm -hmm. been in town forever and you're like, I love you and I want to be your friend and I wish I had already known you for 10 years. Totally. Elise Kazi, who is organizing the Year Rounders Festival, Mark and I had a chance to talk to her the other day in Town Hall where the festival is going to be taking place tomorrow from 10 to 4 and I just fell right in love with her. It's just, you know, when you meet somebody and you like automatically get along with them and she she belongs in my life and I belong in her life. Elise, I hope you're watching this. I love you. I love that. She was so much fun to talk mm -hmm. to. Thank you. Uh, so what's going on? Um, I had a good week. Yeah? You had a crazy week. I had like one of the busiest weeks I've ever had. I know Bob was telling me about his week last night. I was like, why are you having a summer week in March? It was like summertime. Like starting last Tuesday, I uh, was prepping for the pop-up here at the brewery. We, we made about between 80 and 90 dinner, dinners. Uh, cooking Thai food for people and then of course Thursday we hosted trivia mm -hmm. Friday and Saturday was the 24-hour play festival Saturday and Sunday my play went up to I don't want to say this but great acclaim like really really wonderful response from mm -hmm. most people there most. were definitely some detractors well when you write a play about somebody losing their apartment in Provincetown oh. not everybody is going to relate to the person who's losing their apartment as mm -hmm. it turns out so. Everyone's going to be like, I loved the hero of the story, the landlord. <laughs> no, um, you know, I, it was important to me to write a play about what was really going on in my life and in, in town, and that's what I did. And, you know, I think it went over pretty well. Mm. And then, of course, you know, that was my week. And I, all I did Monday was sleep. Good. It's nice to be back in the world right now. You had you had a winter day. Yeah. <laughs> After a summer week. Yeah. How was yours? Good. What did you do? Um, I had a good week. I was in Boston, um, but I did some really fun things. On Sunday, I went to um, the Bach Project, which was so much fun. I don't know if you saw if you saw Joao Santos's show this past summer, or have seen him at Piano Bar recently. His boyfriend Andrew Sharanian has been playing for him, mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. is the choir director at um, the. Parish of All Saints in Dorchester. And one of the projects they work on is um, the Bach Project, which is they produce these classical music events. And they had one of their biggest events this past Sunday. And I made it to, it was incredible. Yeah. I it was like a choral event? 
Um, yeah, orchestral. But I think I've been in a church maybe less than 10 times in my life. Um, it shows. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I always just get nervous because I'm like, am I, there's always like things you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Like you kneel sometimes and I'm always like afraid that I'm not going to do everything right. But it was a very fun, like, I don't want to say casual environment, but it was very uh, welcoming. What's the denomination? I don't know. I don't even know what that means. It means is it a Catholic church or is I, it a... I don't know. Oh, okay. But they did perform uh, the St. John Passion. So it was about, um, you know, Jesus. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> But like obviously, <laughs> I like know the story, the the gist of the story. But they there were a lot of details in there that he didn't quite know, and it was beautiful because it's all performed through song. And they had I they had what was that eight soloists and the narrator. Everyone involved was incredible. They had probably a twenty piece orchestra with strings, and it was beautiful. Andrew was um, conducting. Mm -hmm. uh, but my, probably my, f one of my favorite soloists, everyone was really incredible, um, was a gentleman named Ulysses, who you might, he comes for the leather weekends in town. Um, he Ulysses. sang the part of Jesus, was incredible, has this gorgeous bass baritone voice that mm -hmm. I could listen to forever. And I always think of Jesus as a tenor. I would have said the same thing, but um, hmm. with, it, all the mean people were tenors. Oh. Like, oh wait, no, I guess that's not true. Pilot was also a baritone. Yeah. Yeah. But the narrator, who was really phenomenal, was a tenor, one of the most beautiful tenor voices I've heard in quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, but the gentleman Ulysses who played, um, who sang the role of Jesus, it was interesting because at, I saw that on Sunday, and then Monday night I went to a party called Fascination at Legacy, which is a monthly kink party in Boston that um, is the first Monday of every month at uh -huh. Legacy. And the promoter and organizer of this event was also Ulysses, oh. who sang the part of Jesus the day before. So it was it, it was just really cool to see someone who has such um, like varied interests and in, mm -hmm. like to see him in a church one day and then in some hot leather pants the next night was interesting. But I had so much fun at Fascination. It was a really, really cool party. And it was definitely one of those things where when we went, we were like, this is crazy that this is in Boston. Well, why was it so crazy? What was happening? Uh, it's a kink party. So it was like fun and wild and crazy. What's your kink? Um, I think my mom's watching right I now. I thought you were so. going to say my mom. I'm like, what? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> your mom's my kink, too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so I won't be talking about that. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was fun. Good. Yeah. I'm glad you had a good time. You never go out like more than once. In no, a, it was a struggle. In a week. Like I was in Boston for four days, and I went out two nights in a row, and that basically took over in the entire four days because the rest of the time was recovery, DoorDash, mm -hmm. things like that. Shopping for clothes online. Yeah, you know the things you do to recover. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You guys, I forgot to say. Make sure you stay tuned till the end of the show because we're bringing back our game for your consideration where you're going to call in and try to win this wake up mug and this flotsam and jetsam, not all who wander are lost candle. One of my personal Work. favorite scents. Mm. Oh, that is good. It smells like home. Mm. Um, yeah, so play, call, mm -hmm. win. Yeah, we're going to do that later. Yeah. And um, we also forgot to mention, we're sitting behind our gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous brand new desk. Um, it's amazing. I don't, if you've been in the studio to see the way we have been recording this for the past few years, we have like a, a plank of wood resting on stools before mm -hmm. that we like straddle and me and Bob are like crammed behind here. So it's very nice to be able to sit behind this gorgeous desk. Thank you, Charlie. Check out mm -hmm. Charlie Builds on Instagram because mm -hmm. Charlie built this. Yeah. And there were like stories and posts of him making this desk mm -hmm. for us. And it's beautiful. He dropped it off last night while we were hosting trivia. And mm -hmm. I'm just so happy with it. It was like Christmas. Yeah. When he brought this in last night, I was like, oh! <gasps> I wish he had put a bow on it. it <laughs> It was so funny because we were like about we were right, we were about to start trivia, so like the brewery was like fairly full with people, and all of a sudden, like just we like built a table in the middle of the room. And we're sitting by, and everyone's like, "What the hell is going on?" <laughs> we opened it up in front of these fridges where all the sodas are, and I was like, "This is a concession stand now. People mm -hmm. couldn't even get by to order beer, but you can get a soda from us." Yeah. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah. Uh, what's new in the world? Um, in the world or in town. 
Um, this is something you like. Did you know that last week the Billboard Hot 100 Top 10? It was the first time that eight of the 10 songs were by female artists. Really? Yeah. It's never been that way before? Mm -mm. That's crazy. I love that though. I mean, all of my favorites are women. Yeah, I, I just don't even, I rarely listen to men sing. You, you've you said that before. Just myself. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, let's see what else we got. Honestly, so much of the news from this past week is a lot of political stuff. There's been a lot of not really terrible things happening across the country, obviously. Um, the most recent thing that happened this week that a lot of people were talking about um, was the anti-drag bill that was passed this week in Tennessee. Um, there are 26 bills circulating in the country between 14 states that restrict um, <laughs> drag performances, and the first one to pass was this past week in Tennessee. Um, yeah, basically it, qual it qualifies um, anyone dressing up as the opposite sex for performance as like a cabaret or um, like basically it lumped that in with like indecency laws. Um, mm. I, this, if you are caught doing it twice, you can serve up to six years in prison. For being in drag in public? Yeah. That passed? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so a ton of celebrities have come out to um, was RuPaul one of speak them? Speak against it. RuPaul was one of them. Good. Yeah, because right when it passed, I kind of was like, obviously RuPaul has done some amazing things for the queer community over the last 30, 40 years of her career, um, and not to always. It's hard to always put a lot of pressure on the people that have been doing work to do more work, but I think she has purposefully positioned herself as the leader of drag, as like the queen of all queens. Like, so I feel like if you're gonna position yourself that way, like it's, you gotta fill the role. Yeah. But um, she did post a video of her talking about it. She called it a distraction. She said a classic distraction technique, distracting us away from the real issues that they were voted into office to focus on. Jobs, healthcare, keeping our children safe from harm at their own school. But we know that bullies are incompetent at solving real issues. They look for easy targets so they can give the impression of being effective. They think our love, our light, our laughter, and our joy are signs of weakness, but they're wrong because this is our strength. Well worded. I disagree. What? Um, not that I don't think it was well worded, but um, I don't think that that is the, um, like I don't think they're doing this as a distraction. I think they're doing this purposefully. They are trying to criminalize queer people. They're starting with drag with drag queens and trans people. And I think this is, they're pushing, like if you would have said that this was gonna be happening five ten, or 10 years ago, you'd think it's crazy, but they are continuously moving the line mm -hmm. as to what, so that our outrage will be blunted so that they can do some really serious harmful things. Obviously, it's bad, but like it's like oh, drag queens can't read to children. Like not, I don't want to say who cares, but like that's not the worst thing in the world. But it is simply a a step in a direction that they are purposefully going. They're not doing this to distract us from anything. They they didn't run on issues of healthcare and keeping our. They didn't run on those issues. They literally ran for the opposite. They like they ran on the platform that we're not going to give health care to everyone because you love your health insurance. Like they, that's what they ran on. Mm. They and what they did run on was demonizing trans people and drag queens and queer people. That is what they ran on. They're doing exactly what they want to do, and I feel like this is kind of a soft, misguided response. What do you wish she had said? I don't know. Just not that. I I I wish she was a little more forceful, and I think I. I would have, I, I would have liked her to, um, like, show a little bit more that she understands the gravity of this, and, like, really talk about how scary it really is. It's not just a distraction; it's scary. She obviously hasn't gone to Tennessee lately. I mean, I don't know. Doesn't sound like it. Yeah. Um, Unless that's where her yard is, where she does her fracking. Yeah. Does RuPaul have a house in Tennessee? It's it's not fracking, it's mineral rights. She's selling mineral rights. Okay. Um, no, I think this is great. I think putting your face out there to saying, well, this is the side that I stand on is a good thing, yeah. but 
Well, she knew she had to say something. Yeah, and definitely. So she said the most sort of like political, kind of calculated. Like it sounds like yeah. some, a speechwriter wrote it for her. Yeah, but I, I that's just, well worded. It sounds like a writer wrote mm -hmm. that. But I feel like she, it just it allows people who read that be like, oh, it's just a distraction to like sit back. But like, I feel like people should be a little more worried because worry turns into action, in my opinion. Did you see the Jon Stewart clip on this? Ugh, Jon Stewart's incredible. Jon Stewart should run for president. Honestly, like I know like one of our biggest critiques of Donald Trump running and like other people that have said that they were throwing their name into the ring is like, why are we having like TV celebrities um, running for president and things like that? But honestly, Jon Stewart, I think, would be an incredible candidate and it would kind of combat that. You gotta fight fire with fire with sometimes and he is a huge celebrity. But also on the other hand, he's done more for the victims of 9-11 and the first responders than anyone else. Like over the past like four or five years, he was the biggest proponent of pushing for um, like uh, health, like health insurance and better health insurance for the first responders that were dealing with a lot of the really bad repercussions of being a first responder at 9-11. Um, he, and he, at the very minimum, his most of his like public facing life for the last 20 years has been very politically mm -hmm. minded. Like oh, he yeah. knows what he's talking about. He pays attention, he cares. Yeah. And he just happens to say the things that I agree with. Uh, totally. So like he'd and, be a good, good candidate for me. Yeah, and he also he's obviously dropped a lot of the humor and comedy that he had been using in years past, but he still has like this level of levity and realness that I think a lot of people appreciate. He was interviewing, or he was having a conversation, I don't know if he was necessarily interviewing, but debating, I guess, with um, a conservative Republican uh, politician, and he was basically using his own words against him. It was really great. Basically, the guy was like, um, like they were conflating the fact that um, the idea that the First Amendment rights of these drag queens were being infringed upon um, their free speech. And then he was like, well, he's like, and there's like, but we can't infringe upon the Second Amendment. He's like, well, that's the one that it says that shall not be infringed. That's what that guy said. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it was great. And then he's like, well, the government has a, a responsibility to protect you. He was like, what? He was like, oh, the government has a responsibility to protect children. What is the leading cause of death? for children. And the guy's and, like, I know you're gonna say it's guns. He's like, I'm not gonna say it like it's an opinion. Right. It is guns. It is a fact. Gun, right. Yeah, guns kill more children in America than anything else. So if we, if we need to protect children, right. why aren't we doing it? And that's the whole thing. I feel like the um, the when Republicans try to like demonize queer people in public spaces, they have this idea that like, oh, they're gonna, th I mean, it's and it's so foolish for us to hear as queer people when they say it, like, oh, they're gonna turn people queer, like turn people gay and things like that. And, and I, that reads really well to their audience because they don't really understand what queerness is. But I think the way they're right in, their, in the sentiment behind that, and it's not that we're, like having queer people in public spaces is turning people gay, but it is allowing queer people or young people to see representation which allows them to connect with who they really are. So it's not that it's turning them gay, it's allowing them to be free enough to be themselves, which could be gay. Right, yeah. I feel like there's no greater percentage of gay people now than there ever was. It's just people at a younger age can feel comfortable expressing who they really are because of representation. Right, because they can see, uh, I mean, even like I grew up in the early 2000s, I, I like was when I was a young teenager, and. The I, like I think back to like the way I thought about the fact that I was queer and gay, and like it's so weird and misguided. And I look back and I'm like, it's because I had no representation right. of what living a life as a queer person was. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what it was, so that's why it terrified me so much. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, it's like, oh my god, I'm a gay person. I'm gonna have to like move to an island and like only be around gay people. And I was like, and that sounds did. terrible, but that's exactly <laughs> what I did. <laughs> I um, know. Yeah. It's fun here. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh my God, are, are you still talking about this for another second, Tennessee? Well, I mean, not necessarily, but there's a ton of offshoots from this. Okay. Let's talk about Tennessee for another more, because there's a, uh, another story coming out of Tennessee. Is it happier? Um, it's funnier. Okay. Funny. Oh. We'll go with funny. All right, I'll um, funny. So in that same state where they just passed this law, um, 
saying that drag queens can't be in public anymore. Uh, the governor signed that, is planning on signing that bill into law, but the lieutenant governor is a gentleman named Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally. He's 79 years old and he has been forced into the public spotlight because a local publication in Tennessee has discovered that on Instagram, he has been commenting on a young man's Instagram profile. Are, um, are we looking at that right yeah, now? Yeah, do we have the picture up? Uh, so is, the, is at least the twink next to me and the, guy, the other guys next to him, right? Damn. Perfect. Um, so it's a young gay gentleman who posts um, some pretty scandalous photos. No, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say scandalous. It's not scandalous, but from the perspective of what's happening within the story, I guess you would call it perspective. So it is. he's an aspiring performer named Franklin McClure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Randy McNally used his verified Instagram account to make all these comments. Um, what kind of comments? McClure often appears scantily clad and wearing makeup on his Instagram posts. And the two interact in the comments. So like he'll post and then the, um, the young man will post back. Uh, McNally calls him Finn, which is a nickname that this person has, but that is not mentioned anywhere on his Instagram profile. So, you... so the lieutenant governor of Tennessee knows this person's like personal cutesy well, I, nickname. I'm just thinking that he's in his DMs that we're not seeing. Sounds like it. Yeah. Um, let's see. So this is just happening days after um, the governor, uh, that law passed. Um, let's see. Well, it sounds like the lieutenant governor of Tennessee is on our side. I mean, the, the fact... the it's such an ally. Such an, an ally. ally. Well, honestly, the, when he was pressed about the issue, at first he said that they became Facebook friends through mutual friends. And then a spokesperson released a comment saying, who cares if a politician was praising his constituent? <laughs> um, and that he used, the, and he, he used the wrong emojis because he's a great grandfather. Because he's commenting heart emojis. And um, one of my favorites of comments is, Finn, you can turn a rainy day into rainbows and sunshine. Which is like so typical of what an 80 year old man would say to a twink on Instagram. Yeah, somebody that he's not related to and ha doesn't personally know. Yeah, right. Um, and also part of the comment said that McNally had no intention of stopping doing this. Good for you. Yeah. And the, uh, along with the statement, they're like, how dare you accuse this man of being, of doing something sinister? And I'm like, that's not what we're doing. We're not accusing, I, like, com like commenting on a twink's Instagram profile isn't sinister. You think it's sinister, but it's not. <laughs> love your twinks, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You don't think it's sinister to love a twink? That is what I said off camera, but <laughs> that is not my statement on the show. That's not your official statement. Yeah, though. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna king shame anyone. I mean, not king not shame. Not after what like, you did on Monday. I followed all the rules. Oh, that's your kink. Following rules, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so that's, uh, not that that's a fun story, but I mean, honestly, I think the gayest thing you could do these days is be an anti-gay Republican. That's the gayest thing honestly. you could do. Honestly, yeah. Nothing makes me think you're a gayer person than being an anti-gay Republican politician. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, another, while we're on Tennessee, what is going on over there? But um, Tennessee also is introducing a bill that is going to allow clerks to refuse marriage licenses. Didn't we already do this? Yeah, right. Um, obviously, the first thing on a lot of people's minds is same-sex couples, the fact that these people will be refusing um, licenses to same-sex couples. But they're also including language that will allow the ability to of these clerks to deny marriage licenses based on um, like interracial couples, um, interfaith couples. Yeah. So Tennessee seems a little bit like a hellhole right now. Mm -hmm. um, I am excited to see the statements of huge queer allies that are based in Tennessee. Like I figured Dolly Parton might say something soon, or Miley Cyrus. She, Dolly, that's like the third rail to Dolly, anything political. But I mean, it, but she's often sp spoken out about queer rights and 
I know you could argue that that's not political, but these days that is extremely political. And mm -hmm. I hope you're right. Let's wait and see what she says. Yeah, and not that like we all need to sit back and wait for celebrities to make statements like that's going to change the world, but but here we are, all the way out and sticking into the ocean in Massachusetts. There are people a lot closer to that who need to be saying something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyhow, I feel like one, once again, the only thing that might actually change something is money. Yeah. So, that's the road to go down. Can uh, I tell you something real quick? Yes. Um, you know that that guy on that plane that like was stabbing the uh, flight attendant recently? No. You don't know this? No. Are you kidding me? Mm -mm. It was a flight from, I wanna say from California to Massachusetts. LA to Boston. LA to Boston, oh, thank I you. I think I did read about this. And uh, he had to be tackled by other passengers because he, he tried to open the door mid-flight and he threatened everybody. He was like heading to the cockpit and he's like, you're all gonna die. Like, and the guy I think is from Lemonster. He, he's a Massachusetts uh, resident and uh, had to be tackled Jesus. and like basically sat on and like hogtied with uh, zip ties. Um, there, all, there were two people from town, one of whom has been on this show, who were on that flight. No they way. asked me not to name them, but I'm trying to get them to come on and talk about it maybe soon. Um, wow. Can you believe that? I can't. I know. Like, I can't believe you didn't see this happening. I, I did, I feel like I did, when the second you said Boston, or LA to Boston, I was like, I do kind of remember. But it seems like every day they're duct taping people to airplane seats. Are they? Is that every day now? Yeah, it's constantly. It's a kink. <laughs> That's what was happening at right. Legacy. <laughs> That's my kink being to duct taped to an airplane seat. seat. Oh my. Me in the middle of a dance floor at Legacy, <laughs> duct taped to an airplane seat. Um, um, yeah. No, but. I just, it's, you see these stories and you hear about them on the news and then you find out that a friend of yours was on the plane and wow. it's like, I don't know what I would have done. What was this person's motivation? Was it just a, mental like... Mental illness. Yeah, a mental illness. He was claiming religion to like, in court yesterday. He was like, I, I was sent by God with a message and the judge was like, I'm suggesting you don't deliver the message. <laughs> and he was like, doesn't everybody want to hear what it is? And the judge was like, please don't. <laughs> For your own good. Yeah. And the guy was like, fine. It's like insanity. I love how that guy talks about his message from God and its mental illness, but Marjorie Taylor Greene gets up there and it's like, oh, she's a congressperson. We have to listen. Mm, no, we don't. Yeah, right. No, I know. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, you're good. Yeah. Um, I think that might be... Oh, we um, spoke last week about Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade uh, at the NAACP Image Awards speaking out in support of their trans daughter and talking about the intersection between queer rights and black rights. Um, in a, so this past week, Zaya Wade, their daughter, she's 15 years old and she made her Fashion Week debut. Um, she was in Paris Fashion Week this past Tuesday. She walked for Mew Mew, uh, their fall winter 2023 show. Um, Dwayne and Gabrielle Union wore all black outfits and sunglasses. Also amongst the attendees were Jessica Alba and Kylie Minogue. Um, so when Zaya came out as trans in 2020, Dwayne described himself as, um, as proud allies. Um, she was all, Gabrielle Union was also one of the only celebrities to speak out against Disney's reaction to the don't say gay bill within Florida. That's when Dwayne was on, uh, the Miami heat. So obviously that was very important to them. Um, and Gabrielle Union also is one of, I don't want to say the few celebrities, but it's a small group of celebrities that have spoken out against the anti-drag bill in Tennessee. And she is one of the few celebrities that is speaking out about that. So I, I've always been a huge fan of Gabrielle Union, but never more so as of late as she's really becoming a, a loud voice for the queer community. True allyship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, Put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. Let's watch Bring It On soon. I love Bring It On. All these like gay movie nights in town, if one of you guys does not do Bring It On soon. Oh, speaking of gay movie nights. Yes. Um, so Mondays at the Pilgrim House is going to be a movie night. It's going to be hosted by Jeremy and Paolo. Uh, they are hosting a movie night on Mondays. Uh, doors are at 6.30. The movie's going to go at 7.30. So, but come a little early because they're going to have uh, themed cocktails around the movie and also some food for you. It's gonna be really cute. This upcoming Monday is But I'm a Cheerleader, which I love. Speaking of RuPaul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of Bring It On. Speaking of Bring It On, Cheerleaders. Oh, Cheerleaders. I was like, um, and also Eddie Ciprian in that movie. Amazing. Wait, who's he? He is plays, what's the woman's name? Kathy Moriarty? Oh, he's the one that married Leanne Rhymes in real life. Yeah. That guy, oh. And then 
cheated on her with Brandy Glanville from Be Housewives of Beverly Hills. Really? Oh, yeah. <gasps> or other way around. Sorry. He she was married cheated. to Brandy Glanville, cheated on her, Brandy Glanville, with Leanne Rimes. Oh. But Eddie Cipriano plays um, <laughs> Kathy Moriarty's daughter in that movie, or son in that movie. Jesus. And he's, he's like the groundskeeper. Uh -huh. And every time they pan to him, he has like a big shovel that he's like stroking or like, he just looks really hot in it. Also, if you guys missed it, I didn't make it to Paolo's pop up, but Paolo did one of the uh, mm. dinners here at the brewery, and his was uh, Portuguese. Uh, specialties like cod cakes and no, I heard it was fantastic amazing. so go to his movie night and be like Psst, can you make me dinner too <laughs> like he's an excellent cook as well I love that yeah so like I said this Monday is gonna be about a trailer and next Monday will be bridesmaids I love bridesmaids yeah um, should we great. talk about what else is going on this weekend and where, where you should oh, go for yeah what? yeah so like we said earlier, uh, it is full on out of hibernation weekend. There are events all over town every minute of every day. Tonight yeah. at the Crown and Anchor, what have they got going on? Um, well, last night was really fun. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to talk about it last week, but they did a cocaine bear party, which isn't what it sounds like. But um, I don't know if you managed to see it. I saw it last weekend, last Saturday, or Saturday night, um, the new movie Cocaine Bear. I think it's Elizabeth Banks who produced and put it all together. Mm -hmm. It was very fun yeah it was a super fun watch based on a true story loosely. i kept i kept saying it was a true story i'm like this is a true story so the true story is that a bear in the woods came across a bag of cocaine and ate it and went crazy obviously this movie takes it to the most outrageous level mm -hmm. it's like killing people it's very graphic very gory but it's campy and fun and ridiculous and it's a good watch what's the moral of the story um, it's very much like as much as I support women's rights, I also support women's wrongs. And the second I found out that the bear was a mom, I was like, yes, kill them. That's the moral of the story? I think so. That's what I took away, right? Uh huh. Don't let bears get your cocaine. Is that the moral of the story? I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but there's already talk of sequels. Yeah, it was fun, go see it. But last night they had a special viewing for Out of Hibernation, and then they had the after party at the vault. I'm mm -hmm. sure that was tons of fun. Uh, tonight, obviously, at the Crown is the RuPaul's Drag Race viewing party, and then there is the Bear Den dance party at the Wave Bar tonight. Also, Joao Santos is performing at the Dive Bar tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then Saturday, tomorrow, we have the Bear Bingo at the Paramount at one o'clock. And then the Boots and Boxers party at the Paramount, which I think is going to be the big dance party for the weekend. Yeah. And then they have the Oscars watch party on Sunday. There's That's also, right. also an Oscars watch party here at the brewery with Carmen and Sam. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, tons of fun. Do I have any other stories? I don't think so. Let's go to Anne. So to, uh, Anne's our new weather girl. Let's see if we find out what the weather is. <laughs> Bob and Harrison, it's me, your weather Anne. And this week I actually read the weather news. I took everyone's criticisms very seriously. I know, I'm very aware that I gave up centuries ago trying to figure out what's going on. So I read the weather news and what I learned is that Antarctic sea ice is at an all time recorded low, okay? Which is a pretty troublesome fact to know uh, in a place like Provincetown that was also in the news this week for being one of the top 10 small coastal towns in the USA as named by USA Today. And darling, before we go any further, I just, um, most of my fans are flat earthers and they believe nothing I say. So could you please just film the tide line for them just to prove that we are in a coastal location. Oh, it's just beautiful, majestic, really. Oh, anyways, um, 
I, as much as what you just saw resembles my serotonin levels, that is actually the timeline, and that is something unlike my serotonin levels that we all do not want to go up, okay? So I've got all sorts of nervous. What is Provincetown's plan for sea level rise? And so I went to the planning board's website because plan is in their name. They must have a plan for sea level rise, and I learned that they do have a plan for this very site right here. Um, what their plan during this time of global calamity is that it's okay to use some of the world's resources to build a 31 room luxury hotel right here because you know that old saying right when you have a problem just make it luxury nothing says luxury like putting your head down on a high thread count silk pillow and hearing the ocean as you fall asleep and by that i mean literally the ocean is entering your ears because your room is being flooded <laughs> Okay, now I give both sides of every equation in my little oration, so I want you to know that there are some proponents to this project. Um, one of the things that will have to happen if something gets constructed here is that there will have to be a one-bedroom affordable unit added to Provincetown's housing inventory. Just the thing they don't tell you is that that unit will be affordable because all of the workers at this 31-room luxury hotel will all be sharing that unit and splitting rent. <laughs> Anyways, um, some people say that the old reliable fish house behind me is um, dangerous. It's dilapidated. It's weathered. But I completely disagree. This is still a great location to have a nice fish sandwich. Okay, they've got custom seating, as you can see. This has no bottom. So when you bite into that hot, diseased fish from our troubled oceans and you inevitably have to relieve yourself seconds later, you don't have to get up and go to the bathroom. You can just undo your skirts and relieve yourself right there in the chair. And that being said, I am going to relieve you now from listening to my political views, which do not represent the views of Bob Harrison, Wake Up in Provincetown, live from Provincetown or Provincetown Brewing. Just mine. Are we back? Thanks, Anne. Did you talk about the weather at all? <laughs> <laughs> it's really sunny and nice out today, you guys, in case Anne didn't tell you that. I love it. Please welcome Eric Borg, our friend, to the Wake Up Desk. Thank you. Yeah. How it's, are you? I'm well. It's so different from this vantage point. Right. Yeah. It's very nice. You've been on the show before, though. Never been on the show. Wait, I've always what? just been in the background at the oh. bar. Oh my god! <laughs> I can't believe we've never had you. Well, you had a few segments on the first. Oh, that's few. right. Yes. Yeah, right, right, right. Oh my god! Years ago. Yes. Yeah, it was years ago. Yeah. So, to, to the viewers who might not know you, tell us a little bit about how you came to Provincetown. What made you fall in love with Provincetown? What you do here? Sure. Yeah. So I, I first started coming to Provincetown in 2010, mm -hmm. um, and I much immediately fell in love with it like like you do I was really taken with the quirky community and the, the, the vibrant culture and the natural beauty um, and just the fact that there's like all these different groups of people sort of fiercely celebrating and vying for this community on this tiny little spit of spit of land and the fact and just like the rich tapestry that that creates rich but delicate but a, a really um, there's just nowhere else like it. Mm -hmm. So that was when I first started coming here. Um, and then I moved here full time in 2019 to open up this business with my friends and colleagues. Um, and I've been here ever since. Yeah. Yeah. You've served on a few boards in town. Yes. Tell us about a little about your experience, how long you've been on those boards, yeah, so, how much you love it. <laughs> <laughs> so when I, when I moved here full time, it was imparted on me by kind of a friend and mentor that if you have the, the time and the ability if you, to give back to your community, then you really should. And mm -hmm. arguably, you must, especially in this town. That's what, kind of what this town, I think, requests of people, mm -hmm. is to give what you have to offer mm -hmm. in whatever form that takes. And um, like, it could be a lot of different things. Um, it could be starting a morning show or, or whatever. <laughs> but for me, kind of as I was deciding to as I was staring down the barrel of my first off season in Provincetown, I decided to get involved with some of the boards. So I joined the Visitor Services Board, which is basically our tourism board. Mm -hmm. And um, we work with the Office of Tourism to figure out how to market Provincetown in terms of tourism to uh, a wider, more diverse audience, um, how to disperse grant funds for the different events that drive tourism, things like that. Um, and then I joined the Zoning Board of Appeals, which is, you were asking, what, do you have, what are your qualifications for that? Well, <laughs> um, 
I, I've learned a lot about how to, you know, interpret our zoning bylaws um, so that we can foster responsible development while still maintaining the unique character of the mm -hmm. town. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the boards I'm on. And why am I running for select board? I, yeah. thought, I just thought that I could combine those experiences along with my experience uh, running this business and the challenges that we've learned about, like trying to, trying to run a year-round business here um, together, combined with the fact that I, I'm a Harbor Hill resident, so I am acutely aware of um, what this housing crisis feels like. Mm -hmm. Um, when we first opened this business, it got to a point before Harbor Hill, before I was one of the lucky people who got to move into Harbor Hill, I thought that the housing situation was really going to be the thing that like, sunk the whole mi mission. You know, right. here we were putting in all this effort and work and it was going to be housing right. that, that made, it, didn't, made, it, made it fall apart. So I was very lucky. Um, that I, I was able to find a home at Harbor Hill, mm -hmm. but um, I just know firsthand that there are a lot of people like me who are here, who want to be here, who are fighting, they're literally fighting to be here and to give whatever they have back to the town. And housing is this unacceptable obstacle mm -hmm. that is, I think, really kind of sucking the lifeblood out of Provincetown right now, and it just can't get any worse. Yeah. So. We can't afford for it to get any worse. Um, we already have businesses not open on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday a lot through the summer, and. It's getting a little scary out there. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's so interesting that you, and it does make you very uniquely qualified for the select board because you're coming at it from so many angles. You're someone who's experienced the housing crisis, but you also own a business. You've also served on town boards. So like, you know it from so many angles. Um, that's great. Thank you. So, <laughs> I mean, he's probably not trying to brag, but he also volunteers at the soup kitchen. Mm -hmm. I do. Well, that's, yeah. It's one of my highlights of the week. Mm -hmm. Wednesday morning, I'm out, I'm back there chopping vegetables, Cute. taking orders from Gina. I love it. Is Elaine there? <laughs> we don't overlap with Elaine. Oh, bummer. Uh, I see enough of Elaine here, love Elaine. <laughs> right. But she, she's volunteering there and she's bringing her cookies to the soup kitchen too. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Bob said you also wrote for the banner for a, a time? I did. Before you were a full-time resident, yes. you lived and worked in town. Yes. So. Like I said, I started coming here in 2010 and I absolutely loved it. I was just taken with the town. And I was a journalism major uh, in college. And so I started freelancing um, for the banner just as a way to just become more involved and be immersed. So I was going to select board meetings and stuff like that. I was like, I was living my intrepid little journalist fantasy kind of for a while there. Um, While tending bar at the Red Inn. Yes, with Bob. <laughs> Every Sunday night, like ten years ago. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine? Yeah. How, <laughs> uh, didn't you hit your head on the glasses? I was only hired because um, Tommy Myers insisted I get hired, and then also because I'm uh, half an inch shorter than. Yeah. The, the, Had the he grown his hair out any more than yeah. it is right now, he'd have been brushing the glassware the whole time. Please, uh, <laughs> do, you miss, do you miss me on Sundays? I do miss you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm just, I'm really excited for you. I'm happy that you're doing this. Um, I know, it, you know, c politics can be something of a snake pit, and hopefully this, I, like I was saying earlier, I hope this election season is a little bit friendlier than the last one. Um, he doesn't want that. I to just be was so. like, where's the fun in that? Yeah. I'm just kidding. No, I feel like uh, there are so many avenues in this town that could all be a little friendlier. And I feel like what's important to remember as we talk about people running for select board is like the reason people are getting involved is because they love and care about this town. Right. They have everyone has their own unique vision of where they want to see the town going. But I think everyone wants to get on the select board and everyone in town who's doing anything like they it's because they love Provincetown and they want it to be better for everyone. Yeah. So thank you for all you're doing for the town. It's a lot like you. You do a lot. You care about the town and it's very evident. Thank yeah. you. So thank you. Good luck. You guys do. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, let's talk to your friend. My friend? Yeah. Elise? Oh my god, you guys are going to love her. Yeah. I'm in Provincetown's historic town hall with Elise Kazi, who is running the 36th 
not in a row year rounders festival right and that's right that covid thing slipped in and we couldn't do it for two years so how many people are you expecting tomorrow well, last year we had almost 400 nice who passed through the doors and we're not going to count this year because we don't have to show vaccine cards or things mm -hmm. so we're anticipated about the same excellent and what can people expect to see well we have a whole bunch of artisans and crafters who come in and have a um, a table for free. Mm -hmm. uh, the nonprofit organizations and the town committees and boards set up tables for free so that it can be a whole information center that everybody can get out of all of their hibernation and come and see what's happening in Provincetown. That's excellent. So, any board that has an open seat, there will be a table of people like recruiting, kind of. Yes, yeah, sure. Bit. Excellent. Sure. And what kind of fun stuff? Like, give me an idea of some of the tables. Well, we've got. Um, at uh, one o'clock, we're having a pet parade. Nice, have you done that before? We've done that before. We've had a chicken that won one time, <coughs> and we've somebody brought a goat, and I think there were some lizardy things at other times. And the, you know, normal everyday dogs and cats are problems now. Somebody brought a goat into a pet parade here? Yeah, it, was a, it was a- Oh, like a little baby goat? You know, like They're so little, cute. Just, yes. They jump up. Yeah, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> and go bing, bing, bing. Now, you and your wife, Penny, are yes. running the program? Right. And how did you get involved? Well, um, a couple of years ago, probably around 2017, 2018, the people who were running it said, oh, we haven't done anything and we're not going to do it. And it was late January. Mm -hmm. And we said, oh, no, 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 you have to do this. So we jumped in with uh, Lydia Hamquist, who's been in town for uh, longer than lots of people. And she ran it um, with her friends and other things. And so she helped us get into the swing of it. And um, several other people, we have uh, uh, Joanne Cove, who's an artisan. So she knows a lot of the artisans and she's involved too. And um, other volunteers that we could use Friday is today from 8 to 12 we're setting up if anybody wants to walk over and open tables all right this is airing 9 to 10 so right after people watch this they can come see you in oh, here sure and then help us just open tables and move things around and set up uh, easels for things and, and help us with the silent auction we have a silent auction running to help defray the cost of uh, running the, the program so we can keep it free forever that's excellent mm -hmm. so what time is it happening tomorrow tomorrow from 10 to 4 10 to 4 and uh, then we have the silent auction right, right at four, a quarter to four, mm -hmm. and uh, all the winners go, yay, look what I won. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of stuff is in the silent auction? Um, gift certificates for different restaurants in town, um, stop and shop. Uh, um, there are some product of different stores that have given pillows or uh, lamps or um, vases or other kinds of things too. So. And will there be food and beverage this year? No food allowed in the hall because we don't have the permits for having food. Gotcha. And they don't want the floor to get down. Of course. <laughs> this is such a spectacular space. I love that you guys do this here. And it's probably one of the few rooms in town that can accommodate 400 people. Sure. So uh, thank you so much for doing this and for carrying the torch. All right, Bob, great. Stop by on uh, the, after the show today if you want to volunteer for tomorrow's Year Rounders Festival. Elise, thank you so much for your time, and we'll see you soon. Good. Thanks a lot. Okay. See you guys. So you can go and volunteer for the Year Rounders Festival today up until 12. Elise is there right now, hard at work, popping out tables, setting up the room. And like she said in the interview, the room's going to be lined. Like every board in town is going to have a table. Okay. So if you want to get involved, like Eric was encouraging you to do, go to the Year Rounders Festival tomorrow and sign up for a board. Awesome. Yeah. And now, please welcome to the show Mr. Dave Greenberg of Northeast Ursaman. Hi. Thank yeah. you for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Of course. Yeah. And we've got a, an exciting weekend ahead. Yes. Yeah. Um, this Out of Hibernation weekend is a little bit more expanded. We're doing some more activities, some more awesome. fun stuff at the uh, Crown. Um, all of our events are um, produced in collaboration with the Crown. And uh, we have uh, this year in collaboration with the Provincetown Business Guild. Um, and uh, we're just, we were so excited to add some more really great things to the weekend. So we're working with Outermost Yoga and um, there's a bear yoga event and, uh, and Conscious Bear Connections, which is a, another event offered at the yoga studio. What's Conscious Bear Connections? So it is more of an um, intimate experience um, for your bear weekend. It's about body, posi body positivity mm -hmm. and um, uh, body acceptance. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's been curated by um, uh, Outermost Yoga and uh, Stephen Hanks, the director of the Provincetown Business Guild. 
and uh, they uh, wanted to offer a more cozy sort of uh, experience for the weekend because it's still cold out, so yeah. it's nice to be close and cozy. And, yeah. We're still um, hibernating a little. A little bit, <laughs> a little bit. We're waking up here, so. Right. Yeah. I love that. So, yeah. How yeah. long has uh, Northeast Ursa Men been an organization, a club? So, the Northeast Ursa Men uh, were founded in 1992. Oh, wow. Uh, based out of Hartford, Connecticut. And uh, they cater to uh, the Northeast in general. Um, so, we have members from all over. Uh, we do a lot of events in Connecticut and Massachusetts. Um, so a lot of people know us from P-Town, our P-Town events. We also run Spooky Bear, um, which is a fantastic event if you've been mm -hmm. to um, the Spooky Bear, like, some, the last couple of years it was like carnival busy. Yeah. yeah. It's yes. like so Insane. busy. I know. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So we, th and a lot of the people that come to Spooky Bear come back to Out of Hibernation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the bear events in P-Town are so much fun. And, you know, the bears love coming here. And how could you not? I mean, P-Town is such a fabulous experience. Yeah. How many years have you guys been doing Out of Hibernation? So I believe that Out of Hibernation has been going on for um, around about eight or nine years mm -hmm. at this point. Spooky Bear has been going on for almost 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, so Spooky Bear started out as a um, independent like event for members at the beginning um, back in the middle 2000s and then we opened it up to the public and look what it's become yeah, yeah. and so growing out of hibernation is um, kind of been a dream for us mm -hmm. and so being able to work with um, the fabulous people at the crown and anchor and at the Pro uh, provincetown business guild um, has just really expanded our horizons and um, you know we're able to bring so much more to everybody yeah right. So. Where are you going to be tonight? Where am I going to be tonight? Yeah. Well, um, I'm going to be at the meet and greet. So come to the meet and greet. Come and meet me. Um, but <laughs> come and meet some of the fabulous, fabulous people on my team mm -hmm. who uh, put together Out of Hibernation Weekend. And, uh, and then I'm probably going to be at the Bear Den at the, at the Wave Bar. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that'll be a great place for dancing. And there's a fantastic DJ there. And you know, mm -hmm. so it's going to be amazing. Do you host a lot of events outside of Provincetown as well? We do. Um, we host um, in Connecticut and Western Massachusetts. We do a lot of uh, dinners out and uh, trivia nights and bingos. And um, we, uh, we also sponsor the uh, Connecticut Bear Contest, which, yeah, so it's really <laughs> exciting. So it's a really fantastic big weekend that we hold every December, um, December 2nd through 4th of this year. And uh, we have a panel of judges and hopefully several contestants this year. So if you want to enter, mm -hmm. you know, you can sign up online. And uh, our Connecticut Bear title holder picks a charity of their choice uh, for the year to raise money for uh, over the course of the year and represent Connecticut in the community and go to community events and are really a face of face for the Bears in Connecticut, which is really awesome, and he yeah. happens to be here this weekend. On the way. Uh, yeah, uh, Mike Criscolo, and he's a fabulous um, Connecticut Bear, So, and he's got some amazing events planned, so you got to go to um, ursamen.org and or check out the Northeast Ursamen on Facebook or Instagram uh, to follow what he's doing. Awesome. Yeah. That all sounds amazing. Yeah. So. And I noticed that you don't have a wedding ring on. So Dave is single. <laughs> if you happen to encounter him tonight at any of these fun things, he's single. I am. Ready to meet the one. <laughs> or the ones. Or the ones. <laughs> yeah, I'm not discriminatory. Yeah. yeah. Or the ones. Why stop right. at one? It's a long weekend. Yeah, oh exactly. <laughs> I'm open to lots. Well, as, as much as y'all love coming to Provincetown, we also, especially in the off season, and like the fact that Northeast Ursamon ha has built up Halloween into the incredible weekend. We're so grateful that people are bringing people to here, especially in the off season. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for like helping us build it up all year long. All yeah. year long. We love Provincetown, and we want to keep coming back. Yay. Yeah, it's very nice um, to meet you. Yeah, so uh, you guys. check out the schedule of events. We had it up earlier. We might be able to throw it back up now. Maybe. Schedule of events. Um, check out a few of those parties, if not all of them. Um, Bingo's going to be a blast. That yes. yoga class is going to be tons of fun. Yeah. yeah. And brunch on Sunday. Killer. That's at the Crown as well? It is. Oh, we love that. Yeah. Have too much fun, Dave. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Thank you.
Um, we're going to give something away now, right? Yeah. What's your phone number? Tell people how to play oh, Harry. We're calling me. Um, so my phone number is 617-676-776. <laughs> 7597. This is an iteration of For Your Consideration. Bob is going to uh, perform mm -hmm. a movie monologue, and you're going to call in and guess what that is from. Yeah. Yeah. So plug his number into your phone now. 617-676-7597. And the first person to call in and correctly guess the name of the movie is going to win this, not this one, because that's his, but A, a Wake Up in Provincetown Mug and a candle from my favorite candle company, Flotsam and Jetsam Goods, made right here on Cape Cod. Here we go. <clears throat> I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to say something that I've prepared tonight. Hello. Uh, how about that ride in, huh? I guess that's why they call it Sin City. Uh, you guys might not know this, but I consider myself a bit of a loner. Um, I tend to think of myself as a one-man wolf pack. Oh. That oh, was no. fast, really? Oh, did you hang up on them? They hung up on them. But when my sister brought Doug home, I knew he was one of my own. Uh, and my wolf pack, it grew by one. So there were two of us in the wolf pack. I was alone first in the pack, and then Doug joined in later. And uh, about six months ago, when Doug introduced me to you guys, I thought, wait a second, can it be? And now I know for sure, I just added two more guys to my wolf pack. Four of us, wolves, running around the desert together in Las Vegas, looking for strippers and cocaine and bears. <laughs> so tonight, I make a toast. Blood Brothers. Did you hang up on somebody? That they came? hung up on me. Oh. Yeah. That is the monologue. <laughs> Call in and tell us what movie that is. <laughs> oh, we got one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Oh, wait, 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 wait. You hung up on them, too? No. Oh, this Christ. always happens. Okay, hello? Hello. Oh, perfect. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, my name's Ann Payson. I'm calling from Cambridge, Hi. Massachusetts. Do you, have, Hi. do you have a guess of what movie that's from? That would be The Hangover. Oh, it's God. actually from The Hangover Part 2. Sorry, hang up. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, just you, kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> We're just kidding. Thank you so much. Um, I'll be in contact to you at how to get your candle and mug to you. Um, congratulations. And, yeah, congrats, and thanks for watching from Cambridge. Oh, great. Thank you very much. I love the show. Oh, thank, thank you. Bye. Bye. We did it. We did it. Yeah. That's a show, you guys. We yeah. want to thank our sponsors. Yeah, our new sponsors, the Crown and Anchor, the Provincetown Business Guild, and the Brass Key at Shipwreck. And the boat slip. Yeah, and the boat slip. Yeah. yeah, and we'll uh, see you guys next Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Good morning, everybody. Wake up. Wake up, wake up. In Provincetown.